morning and welcome to our Easter worship. Um, my name is Margaret Croft, pastor here at Historic Trinity Lutheran Church in Calgary. And I also like to introduce to you our assistant here, Corey, uh, who will be doing our readings. And so let us take a moment to silence now as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. A reading from John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through Him. And without Him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome. Sisters and brothers in Christ, we have passed through the long night, we have waited by the tomb, we have kept the vigil. When God created the cosmos, it was good. Through dishonoring God, the goodness of creation was broken. Yet for love of us, God was patient. He was constantly at work to redeem creation, to unite us with each other and with himself. He taught us the ways of reconciliation and delivered us from oppression as with the Hebrews in Egypt. In visions, she shared with us her dream of a creation that was once again good. Then he came to reconcile us once and for all, by leading us in a new way of being, by uniting us in love and peace, mercy and humility, by making us one body in the sacraments, by becoming one of us, so we might become one with him. For this he was killed, his sacred and sinless body hung from a tree, his limp and brutalized corpse laid in a tomb. Yet for love of us, he did not stay dead. A light shone in the darkness, and the darkness, darkness did, did not, not overcome, overcome it. it. He is risen. He is He's risen indeed. A reading from the 20th chapter of the Gospel according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple ran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been laid on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled into a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They've taken away my Lord, but I do not know where they've laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. 
Let us pray. O God, calm our hearts, our minds, and our souls, that we may hear your word and be fed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Well, what is there to say? To be honest, when preparing for this Easter sermon, I wonder to myself, what is there to say? What good news do I have to share? Because if it was up to me or the news, or perhaps with family members who have loved ones who are sick or have even died or are dying in this pandemic, what is there to say? For those who still need to go into work every day, who have to expose themselves and even their families as they come home, there is no end in sight. And for those who have lost jobs or their investments have crashed and seen bills come in with no idea of how they are going to manage financially with this burden, what hope is there? For those who are isolated from family and friends due to lockdown, constantly in fear of, if anything happened to me, I may never get to see my loved ones again. What is the good news here? The thing is, if it were up to only me, or maybe to yourselves, there doesn't seem to be much at all to be said, or at least something that would be helpful. Or is there? This is where we as Christians turn to the scriptures, turn to these ancient texts that speak not only for generations of past, but for generations to come and for us today. The words of hope and assurance that we are not alone and that we will continue to seek and turn towards life in God rather than death. Throughout Holy Week, we have been preoccupied with the death of Jesus and the ways in which the disciples would get it so wrong. But we also heard from Jesus at the Last Supper that after the resurrection that he would meet them in Galilee. So we too now gather on Easter to meet Christ. And yet our meeting, our gathering, our trip to the empty tomb is not exactly what we had normally expected for. Easter morning. Perhaps some of you are dressed already, spiffed up like a usual Easter Sunday morning to attend church. But imagine many of you are in your pajamas. Last week, I read a Facebook post from a former parishioner a parishioner of mine who had taken a photo of the nightgown department at Walmart. The photo spans the entire long floral pajama dresses with the 1492 black price display over top. And over top of this picture, it read, Hello, all my stay-at-home quarantine friends. Our Easter dresses have arrived. We will not gather together with friends or family and have a big feast. No fighting about whether to have ham or scalloped potatoes or turkey with mashed. No having coffee after church to chit chat and catch up. No singing of hymns with the organ or coming up to the communion rail to receive the body and blood of Christ the way you have always done. Easter will look very different this year. Like Mary Magdalene, who came to the empty tomb, perhaps our Easter will resemble more of her experience of confusion and bewilderment. For this is really what the resurrection creates. The disciples don't, don't show up to see the body disappear and think, wow, exactly what I expected, according to plan. No, Mary, the disciples, none of them really comprehend what just happened. They are disoriented, and in fact, Mary does not even hide her doubts of pain 
as we hear her express her deepest fear with, They have taken my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. But eventually, they will come to believe. Some sooner than others. Some, like the other disciple, immediately see the burial cloths in the empty tomb and believe. Others, like Peter, do not comprehend. And Mary, who is still overcome with grief, is confused. But somehow, in encountering the risen Christ, whether it be through touch, sight, or the call of a name, Mary is called out. The belief follows, but all in its own time. Jesus speaks Mary's name, and in hearing it, changes everything. Suddenly, the unrecognizable gardener is the risen Christ she recognizes. Suddenly, all her memories, her experiences with Jesus are brought back into focus, and she recognizes and sees. Easter is not about the dresses, or the big meal, nor is it even the gathering of the people that you want to hang around. Easter is the reminder of God's promise that the sting of death will never be overcome with the gift of life. Easter is the hearing of God's work to always allow life to bloom through the concrete cracks of grief and despair. Easter is not about things being or looking good in our lives. This is not the promise God assures us. The assurance is that we will never be orphaned. Though the world will no longer see me, you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. Easter is about life. Life when there has been death. Life when death is in our faces. Life when death threatens our future. And this life in Christ is not about just being able to take a breath and keep our bodies going. Life in Christ is about a life that is abundant. And again, this is not about being free from pain or suffering or having all the 1497 dresses on the sales rack. Life abundantly is about a life that honors and lifts up the life of not only ourselves, but others. It's about staying home when we would rather be visiting because the lives of others depend on our actions. It's about leaders having the courage to speak truth about bad things, and yet not instilling fear, to encourage education and to promote trust so that other lives can be saved. It's about working diligently in whatever capacity God has called us to be in our own settings, whether it be working, parenting, grandparenting, unemployed or being retired, or just staying put in a care facility. To discern ways of being that honors life, and that allows life to flourish. These past weeks, with the news of death all around us, it is difficult or sometimes not clear what living as Easter people could look like. After Mary recognizes Christ, she is sent out to say these things. I have seen the Lord as you live faithfully in these days, may you take notice to where the Lord has come. May you take notice to where life abides, where life flourishes, where life is not defeated by death. May you live with the assurance that you have and will and continue to have to see the Lord. For this is God's promise we see in Easter. Thanks be to God. Amen.
this time we continue with the brief order of confession and forgiveness, and we will celebrate Holy Communion together. If we say we have no sin, we have done no injury. We deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But God, who is faithful and just, forgives our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So let us do as Jesus taught, by making confession and peace with one another before we come to his table. Through your Son, Son the Lord, Lord you have, have called us to reconciliation with you, with your children, and with all creation. Yet we continue to sin in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. In joy we turn away from you, and in trouble we turn against you. We fail in love for each other, we fail in love for your creation, and so we fail in our love for you. Have mercy upon us through your Son, Jesus. Amen. Be still, take heart. The Lord has heard you, and the Lord is love. With the words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus will that we should be forgiven our sins. With his death, our sins have been forgiven. With, with his resurrection, we too were raised into new life in union with God. God, have mercy upon us. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. All your creation praises you. The earth hums, the seas pulse, the stars shine, and the galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in the song, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The countries of the world experience pandemic and uncertainty. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace and justice for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We still weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying, assuring them of your loving presence. And especially this morning we remember Pam, Wayne W., Wayne G., Emmy, Merv, Micah, Seth, and Pastor Richard Reimer. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Bless the creative and helpful service of worship leaders this day as we struggle to gather as your church in the midst of the needs of, to self-isolate and to look out for our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember those who have died. Inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us to you in our final days. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give God, God our thanks and praise. On the night in which humanity betrayed him, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, 
broke it and passed it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and passed it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is a feast of victory for our God, killed by the very forces of greed, hate, violence, and vanity. That he fought with charity, love, peace, and humility. Jesus rose from the darkness of the tomb into victory. No longer are we oppressed by evil, for evil has no power against the one who conquered death. No longer are we part, apart from God, for God has made us one with himself through Christ and through this sacrament. And so we join in one body with him, with all the faithful who have gone before us, all those who will come after us, and all the hosts of heaven, singing together the unending hymn of our Lord's victory. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so with these, we proclaim the mystery of our faith, this incredible story of Easter, when love emerged victorious over death. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for the table is ready. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you into life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, through baptism and this meal, you have united yourself to us. You brought us into yourself on the cross, and you brought us with you into resurrection, leaving all our alienation and sin in the grave. Lord, move through us. Let us be a people of the resurrection. Let our hands be your hands, our mouths be your mouth, our lives be your life. Give us courage and faith to know that greed, hate, violence, and vanity have been overthrown. In this journey, strengthen us with the knowledge that he is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. So receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit.